Hello, hello, Simon Kemp from Kepios here, bringing you 10 essential takeaways from our new Digital 2023 July Global Statshot Report. As always, you can read our full report and analysis completely for free over on datareportal.com, but this video will guide you through the top headlines and trends in this latest update to our Global Digital Report series. Starting in reverse order at number 10, the typical smartphone user now consumes more than 20 gigabytes of cellular data every month. Analysis from Ericsson shows that global mobile data traffic averaged 126 billion gigabytes per month during the first quarter of 2023, with that figure up by 36% year on year. Alongside an overall increase in the number of mobile users, a rise in video traffic contributed the greatest share of growth in cellular bandwidth. And Ericsson reports that video now accounts for almost three quarters of all data transmitted over cellular networks, while social networking contributes an additional 8.5%. Next up, research from GWI shows that gaming stereotypes are largely outdated. Internet users aged 55 to 64 now spend an average of 38 minutes per day using a games console, which is more than the time that they spend reading physical print media like magazines and newspapers. More broadly, GWI's data shows that roughly two-thirds of internet users in this age group play video games, with smartphones their gaming device of choice. Now, shooter games like Halo and Call of Duty are the preferred genre for this age group, but puzzle formats are disproportionately popular amongst gamers aged 55 to 64, and especially women, so marketers may want to adopt tailored strategies in order to engage older gamers. In at number 8, India has now overtaken China to become the world's most populous country. India's population overtook China's in mid-April, and since then the gap has been growing by roughly 1 million people per month. Now, these two countries are still home to more than one in three people on Earth, but rapid growth across India's neighbours means that Southern Asia now accounts for an increasing share of the global total. India, Pakistan and Bangladesh all rank amongst the world's ten most populous nations, and Southern Asia as a whole is now home to more than 25% of the world's population. And we're staying in India for story number 7, which reveals that Meta's advertising products now reach more than half a billion users across the country. Ads across Facebook, Instagram and Messenger reached a total of 526 million distinct user identities over the past 30 days, meaning that Meta's Indian audience is now almost twice as big as its audience in the United States. But it's particularly interesting to note that advertisers can now reach more Indian women on Instagram than they can on Facebook, with Instagram's ad reach rapidly approaching 100 million women across the country. However, women only account for 31% of Meta's total ad audience in India, although that's still an improvement on the 26% share figure that we saw this time last year. But that disparity sets the scene for story number 6, which is the stubborn persistence of the world's digital gender gap. A new report from GSMA Intelligence shows that women are still 19% less likely to use the internet than men, with the digital divide at its worst across Southern Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And even more worryingly, the same report shows that women's adoption of connected tech has actually slowed over the past 12 months. GSMA Intelligence reports that 100 million women need to start using the internet each year between now and 2030 if we're to reach the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, but that figure would represent a 65% increase compared with current growth rates. And this means that there's still lots of work to do, but given the economic advantages of bringing more women online, I'd suggest that corporations may want to get involved in helping to address this challenge too. Now, just before we head into the top five, I'd like to say a big thank you to We Are Social for sponsoring this video. We Are Social is a socially-led creative agency with 1,200 people in 17 offices across four continents. They're already a strategic and creative partner to brands like Adidas, Samsung, Netflix and Google, and they deliver a truly global perspective at a time when social media is increasingly shaping culture. To learn how they can help you too, head over to wearesocial.com. In at number 5, people below the age of 55 are now more likely to get their news from social media than they are to get it from television. 
The excellent 2023 digital news report from the Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism reveals that 57% of under 55s now use social media for news, compared with just 48% of this age group who get their news from TV. Facebook tops the rankings by platform, with 40% of all online adults using Facebook for news within the past week. And Facebook remains the top source of social news amongst younger users too. 32% of 18 to 24 year olds say that they use the platform to access news content each week, compared with 31% for YouTube, 30% for Instagram, and 20% for TikTok. Overall, 6 in 10 people aged 18 to 24 say that they use social media for news, which is one and a half times as many as those in this age group who say that they watch news on television. And we're sticking with social media for this quarter's number 4. Data from GWI reveals that social media has now overtaken word of mouth when it comes to introducing people to new brands, products and services. Social media ads are now the third top source of discovery behind search engines and TV ads, with almost 28% of working age internet users saying that they discover brands via paid placements on social platforms. However, social media ads are particularly important for marketing to younger age groups, with this channel now the number one source of brand discovery for internet users aged 16 to 24. And story number three this quarter is that Threads has enjoyed the fastest ever launch of a mobile app. Data AI reports that Meta's new platform attracted 150 million downloads in the seven days following its launch, which is five and a half times faster than Pokemon Go, which held the previous record. Data AI also reports that it took just one week for Threads to attract 100 million active users, which is roughly eight times faster than OpenAI's trajectory to the same milestone. But while the Threads launch has been undeniably impressive, the key test of the platform's success will be how many of those users return over the coming weeks, and how often. But let's return to OpenAI for story number two. Both SimilarWeb and SEMrush now rank OpenAI.com as one of the world's 20 most popular websites, with both companies reporting roughly 2 billion visits to the site in May 2023. SimilarWeb's data also suggests that the site attracted just under 300 million unique visitors in May, with each of them visiting the site an average of 6.3 times. However, SimilarWeb also reports that unique visitors to OpenAI.com then dropped by almost 6% in June. So the more important test will be whether OpenAI can keep its top 20 ranking, especially as new services like Threads vie for people's attention. But our top story in July 2023 is that the number of active social media user identities is now equal to more than 60% of the global population. Kepios analysis reveals that a total of 4.88 billion distinct identities were using social media platforms at the start of this month, which equates to 60.6% .6 of the world's total population. Now, it's important to stress that user identities may not equate to unique individuals, but nonetheless this figure marks another momentous milestone along our journey towards universal connectivity. And user numbers continue to grow too, with our latest research indicating that social media adoption actually accelerated over the past three months. Now that's all we've got time for in this Top 10 Takeaways video, but don't forget that you can dig deeper into all of these stories and loads more of our latest insights over on datareportal.com. If you've got any questions about the content that I've covered today, or what these numbers might mean for you, just pop those in the comments, or message me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or threads where you'll find me as Eskimon. Many thanks to We Are Social and Meltwater for making our global digital reports possible, and to our wonderful data partners for allowing us to share their valuable insights. And thanks to you for joining me today too. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you again for our next round of insights.